This is my rocket accelerator flying for my L1 certification. I posted this as a short a few months ago, and at that point I noticed this comment from CRV Components wanting onboard footage, and it's been haunting me ever since. That happens a lot around here. And you know what, CRV Components? You were right. In this video, I'll walk you through some of the design and build considerations for the camera mount, where I ended up mounting it on the rocket, how I attached it, and show you some of the onboard footage we were able to capture. As an added bonus, I've uploaded all the files to printables, so I will leave a link in the description below if you want to use these for your own projects. With that said, let's get into it. Up until this point, all of my onboard footage has been done with a Rencam 2 4K. The plan was to use these again, but they've been discontinued. The camera replacing that is the Runcam 6 with very similar functionalities and the added benefit of image stabilization. To start, I figured it'd be a good idea to make a model of the Runcam 6. I then started building the camera mount around that model. One of the design considerations I had to make was how much I wanted to angle the camera looking straight down the rocket, or to offset it a little bit. I still wanted to give it a little bit of a low profile, even though this rocket's a Mad Cow Torrent kit with a 38mm motor tube, so it shouldn't go too high or fast. But I wanted to give it a little bit of an angle so that we weren't just staring down the body tube and we could see more of the surrounding area. 7.5 degrees looked good enough. The camera is held in place with a sliding cover, which makes it easy to retain the camera and access it if needed. Since the camera was going to be strapped to a high-powered rocket, we decided to be safe and print it with ASA at 15% infill. Next, we need to figure out where on the rocket to mount the camera. Rockets like this naturally tend to be very stable in flight, and should overpower any odd aerodynamic forces that originate from the camera mount. Still though, to be safe, I put it right where the center of mass was, which worked out really well because the footage looked fantastic from there. At this point, all that was left to do is sand and epoxy the mount to the rocket, and then hit it with some silver spray paint so it matched the color of the body tube. For the first flight, we used the same motor as we did on the L1 cert. This would be the Aerotech I-140W, so probably expect to see about 1,500 feet, apogee, um, 250 miles an hour, and then about 9-ish Gs of force. Five, four, three, two, one. So oh, flight one was great. Uh, we decided to go for a flight two, of course, but with a you know slightly, slightly larger motor. Uh, this is the Aerotech I500T, and according to my sims, it was gonna go 3,000 feet at 450 miles an hour. And I figure, you know, what better way to do the old, that ain't going nowhere test if you're gonna see about 23 Gs. So yeah, why not? Alright, so that about wraps it up for today's video. I really hope you enjoy seeing the process required to make the camera mount and the onboard footage because I really did. It came out way better than I thought it would and I'm really excited about it. And of course, reminder that in the description below I put the link to the printables um, site where I've uploaded this mount and a 3 inch version. This is a 4 inch version. Um, feel free to throw them on your rockets and get some awesome footage as well. So with that, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.